So this thing here, we've mounted this tablet here, and so this is sort of an accessory. Um, and it provides sort of a basic entry-level user interface for the robot. You know, like, how do we get the robot to do something interesting and provide feedback to the user that something interesting is happening? You know, like, you know, I think a face provides some sort of emotional connection for people. Um, so, what, what are they using this robot for at the university? I what kind of research? So, mapping, 2D mapping, 3D mapping. It uses the Kinect to simulate a laser. <clears throat> And from that, it's able to. But not telepresence. Um, no, but you could. I mean, the thing is, you could use this. Let's say you were building. You wanted to. You wanted to build a robot to deliver medication in the hospital. So you need to have your robot to figure out what floor you're on, which part of the building you're in, where to deliver it. So you've got navigation algorithm you need to build. You need to build some sort of localization system. And to be able to have something like this for a school to be able to say, okay, programmers can start on this portion, and we'll have a mechanical team build this portion, and all of them work at the same time, as opposed to a normal sort of development where you have mechanical people try and build something, and then the electrical people try and hook up the electronics to it and hope it works, and then this is able to generate a position based off SLAM. So it uses simultaneous localization mapping. So what it does is it takes and determines its position <coughs> stochastically. Mm -hmm. So it, re it takes sensor input data and builds up a, record a recording of it over time. Mm -hmm. And based on that and a pre-existing map, it's able to determine where it estimates its position may be. And over time, its position should converge to a point. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, confidence in its position. Yes. And these are things that universities are finding useful to educate some students on for robotics. It's good, good training for general writing algorithms for. So in, in that sense, I think it's really good. Whether or not it's been done before is sort of irrelevant. As a $1,600 platform for schools to build ideas on, I think it's great. Like, these are fun projects to work on that are useful towards integrating robots into our daily life. How how we get there is sort of unknown, but there's still a lot of road a lot of work to be done to get robots integrated into society. The tablet is an accessory. I mean, Completely, your, your tablet. In this yeah. is I mean, an accessory on the, on the new on the SSID here. So the only thing you actually need is this thing on the bottom because that talks through the connect. So I can log in from my laptop into this robot. <clears throat> and then I can actually get a visualization of the 3D point. And that actually may be something that's interesting to do. The, the accessory sort of provides an example as the one thing you could attach. We have the drink tray. Have the drink tray. Awesome. So this is this is another idea. Like we haven't had time to finish this project. So one idea is to put a sonar sensor pointing up. So you load in your drinks. The robot might have a tablet interface to display which drinks are whose. Um, and as the inebriated human has to reach for the drinks, the sonar sensor sees the person and Dice stops away. moving. <laughs> and then maybe we'll have a ring of LEDs to you indicate your drink, you've had too many. Can, can, can I just say how awesome that is? Because six years of university education, three years of research and development, just so your six pack can move to where you are. You exactly. So, I mean, we have a robot arm we've made for it that, can, that we've been trying to figure out how to get it to lift beverage. It's a little tricky because beverages are <coughs> amazingly heavy. I, mean, the whole department I know where I was. we may have had practice for years, yeah. but convincing a robot to actually lift the beverage is actually a little tricky. The big one is the power interface. So there's a boost converter to get you 19 volts for a laptop so you can charge your laptop off of the base. So that when it docks, there's only... Like, you can, you can dock and charge the laptop in addition to charging the base. Mm -hmm. They both charge at the same time. But is it essentially a create that's been modified, or is it a whole new? No, no, no. It's a whole new robot. Um, so it's it is essentially a vacuum cleaner robot that has been modified and sort of uplifted, in, in sort of the singularity sense of being uplifted. It's become more intelligent. It can almost talk. Its sensors have been upgraded. Um, it's 
<laughs> it's been improved to support research robotics, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to vacuuming floors. But it, I mean, it is based in some parts. What are the problems with the iRobot K? The biggest problem is the uh, motor encoders. So the previous, the motor encoders would only give you about eight counts per revolution. Uh, okay, they're very low res. So you would never know exactly where the wheels were. And if you're trying to build a map as the robot's driving around. Uh, so you don't have actually a distance. And yeah. how big are the wheels? You know, they're, they're this big around. So you're talking uh, 15 millimeters per step. Almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, may I introduce you to uh, Joe Morales, the master of trivia? <laughs> Wheel that size divided by eight. You know, circumferences. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, so the big, the big issue is the power interface is improved. If you look on the back here, um, the power is accessible. There's a power connector for the connect, so the connect needs external power. Um, so you can just plug it in, and it it works. Um, Spare power for uh, accessories and yeah. random stuff. Yeah. So we have support for all of these different types of interaction and different types of building robots. <coughs> it's just this is a platform to get you started with robotics. If you don't know it's anything purpose, else yeah. and you don't have, if you have a software background and you want to get into robotics or you have an electrical background and want to get into robotics, these are great way, this is a great platform to start with because it gets you something that moves to start, and that, that gets you past that first hurdle that makes things fun, because before you get to it actually moving, you just have a lot of work that's not fun.